This video lesson is on how to discover the magic of words. When I think of magic, I think of something exciting and entertaining, and so words in this sense are magical. One of our goals as readers is to determine the meaning of words as they are used in the texts we read. But first, we need to get down to some word basics. Now let's go back to the concept of syllables. Syllables are parts of words that are broken, or that words are broken into. When you first learned to read, you learned about word parts. Many teachers call them chunks. Well, now that you're older and more accomplished as a reader, you still need to think about syllables because they are important as you break down larger words. You're getting into reading more of the multi-syllabic words that you'll come across. And words like this have more than one syllable when you're reading, or more than one word part. What's great about breaking a word down into its syllable parts is that it not only is helping you pronounce the word or try to say it and read it correctly, but it can also lead to helping you figure out the word's meaning. Take this word for example, anti-dis-establishmentarianism. There are a lot of word parts here. Anti-dis-establish Mint, and then we know the part AR, in ism. Now, what I find kind of cool about this particular word and all of its syllable parts is if we take what we know about each of these parts, we can come to an understanding of what this word might mean. So we enrich our vocabulary with many exciting words just like Selig in The Boy Who Loved Words. In this part of the book, from that day forth, Selig's steps were light and filled with purpose. Ever the collector, he added new words as it pleased him. But now, whenever he felt word heavy, he discovered the ideal places to sprinkle, disperse, and broadcast them. As fun as these words are, we know that we need to really work with these domain-specific words. When we come across domain-specific words, they can pertain to a topic that we're interested in or that we feel more passionate about. Or they can come across in a topic that we're required to learn more about and make our learning a little more challenging we consider what domain specific is. Those are words that are specific to a subject or a topic, such as math, science, and social studies. And often scientists use domain specific words. Make sure that you put these parts into your comprehension connections notebook. As we work with more domain specific words, we get into the language of a discipline. That's the language that deals with terms and vocabulary that would be important to a topic. But it also can include unfamiliar words, uh, new words to us, figurative language, categories of words, and even the identification of related words. The language of a discipline is often filled with jargon. Jargon are those special words or expressions that are used by a particular profession or group and they can often be difficult for others to understand. Teachers will use jargon with students, but we will explain the meaning of that word so that students can use the jargon as well. Here are some examples of jargon for the study of neuroscience. Amygdala, cortex, neurons, hippocampus, cavities, tendrils, terabytes, and accents. Be sure that you include this information in your Comprehensions Connections Notebook so that you can refer to it later as needed. Practice 
working with context clues. The prefix con means with, and we know what a text is. So context clues are clues that are within a text that we use to help us infer or try to guess the meaning of a word. Back to the boy who loved words. I love the word percolated. And if I look at the context that the word percolated is in, the particular sentence goes like this. The thought of them when they percolated in his brain. Now, of course, I can use the context to figure out what they is. They is words. Selick loved everything about words. So the thought of them when they percolated. The thought of words when words percolated in his brain. I can think about percolated in the context clue or the sentence surrounding the word and use that information to think about what it means. I know that an ED ending tells me that it is an action. And since I know that the text is about words, that they, it's something going on in his brain. So I think percolated might mean something like moving around. That's how I infer what a word means. Please be sure to practice inferring at least one word to put in your comprehension connections notebook. Context clues are then what you should be using when you're doing your monthly word wizard work. The purpose of being a word wizard is to learn to figure out what words mean within the context. So as you come across words, you should be listing them, but then you should also be taking the time to figure out what those words might mean based on how they're used. I read this article from Smithsonian Magazine about reversals, and I found some really great words. The first one I took a look at was exuberant, and if I look at how that word is used, I can infer what it might mean. Once great wrongs are done, it is rarely possible to undo them. Earth, the most exuberant planet known to exist in any galaxy. The most exuberant planet. Well, I'm inferring that it might mean the greatest planet in the galaxy. Because my schema tells me that when we're talking about something that's the most, it's either the most good or maybe the most bad. I'd like to think that it's the greatest. Another word that I came across was recuperation. The planet's powers of recuperation and restoration are almost unbelievable. I know that re as a prefix means again. And I've heard of the word um, recuperate, like if I'm really tired and I need to rest, I need to recuperate. So I know that re means again, so maybe recuperation might mean to get back to normal. Now, I've got resurrection on down here, and this is how it's used in the sentence. Year on year, the poppies keep turning up every time bringing their promise of resurrection. Again, I know that re means again. So the promise of resurrection must mean that something's going to happen again. The next step, though, is after using my context clues, I need to make sure that I look all of these words up. Keep in mind that your word wizard is not about listing a bunch of words and defining them first. It's about getting you to think about what it means in context to really use those context clues.